left. Are you finding what you're looking for in there? Hi everyone, hope you're having a good morning. Just a quick video, I wanted to update everyone. I think the last, the last video, the truck was up in the shop for the rear end. So I had that, that noise, that howling noise. Now a little more history on that. That started sometime over our last winter travel season. Um, I don't know exactly when, but it became a noise that was enough that I started paying attention to it, you know, like it, like it started to be like, this doesn't seem like a normal noise to me. And once I, you know, once I was tuned into it, I started to really pay attention to it. Now it was about the time where I had gotten the new rear tires put on. And so for a while, I was wondering if it wasn't, you know, just the new tires, I was hearing the tread, uh, and cause it sounds a lot like, you know, like truck tire tread, you know, you hear the, the big trucks coming down the road with the kind of like that. Now that sound only happened when I was throttle off, no throttle, coasting. You know, that clip I played uh, for you guys to hear that sound, we were, we had just gotten off the interstate up here and coasting into um, a red light. So it was, you know, from 45 miles an hour, no throttle and coasting in. And under those conditions is when I would hear that sound. Now, I would hear the sound and then as soon as I would touch the throttle, the gas pedal, the sound would go away. So that was telling me that it wasn't tire, that it was driveline related. Because if you think about it, um, when you're coasting, there's a certain force being put on the drive line. And I mean like the drive shaft, the U-joints, the rear end, the differential. And then when you hit the pedal, you're putting a different force on it because now the engine is driving the drive line as opposed to it being like in, in freewheel, in coasting mode. Because as soon as I would touch the pedal, the sound would go away. That was telling me that it was drive line related. As I, as I worked up to getting it up in the shop there, you know, I was thinking about uh, like wheel bearings, U-joints. I talked it over with my buddy Tim. He said, it sounds like the rear end, like bearing related, uh, could be the U-joints, could be like in the center. You know, this is a two piece drive shaft. It could have been the center carrier bearings in the middle of the drive shaft. So there were all those possibilities. Didn't really think that the gears themselves in the rear end were affected because it still operated normally. It didn't have any skipping or grinding or anything like that going around turns. So I was kind of convinced that it was bearing, which it turned out to be the bearings. Uh, he didn't have to do the outer axle bearings, so it was the bearings that were in the rear end itself. He said they really showed signs of damage and wear. Um, so we picked it up at the shop which is, you know, four or five miles away from here. And we drove it back. Okay, just picking up the truck from the shop. So it was, um, the bearings were all damaged in the rear end. The mechanic, uh, Harry, he called me yesterday and told me exactly what he found in there. So he said the noise is gone, the howling noise. So it was the bad bearings. Um, so that... I jokingly said to mom the other day, I'm like, boy, the, I hope it's the max is $2,000. I hope. Because he they never called me with a price because, you know, I talked to him the other day and I said, you know, I got to get it fixed. So when he called me yesterday, he's like, I hope you didn't need to get a price because I just went ahead and fixed it. No sound at all. So you can let off the pedal, coast, no sound at all. And in my mind, you know, I'm like, man, it feels like it's rolling better. Like when I'm coasting, it seems like it's freewheeling better. It's probably just in my head, but if there was any kind of drag, that's a big heavy vehicle. How much slowdown could a bad bearing cause a big truck like that? I don't think so. Probably just in my head. 
I think I was so used to hearing that noise. Now without it, it feels just like it's doing everything a lot easier. So that I'm gonna call that problem solved. And I paid, okay? Some of you made comments about how the dealerships are, you know, not a great place to go for service. And I, I don't disagree with that. The reason I go there is because, you know, my friend Tim works, it's a Cortese, they own, you know, a whole slew of dealerships up there. So they have the Lincoln, which is where Tim works. And then right next door is Ford, which is where I took it for the repair. Cause they have the heavy lift there. They can get the thing up in the air. So that's why I take it there because I, you know, I know them, uh, I, I can trust them to a certain degree, I guess. And did I get any kind of um, dispensation on the pricing? I don't know that. I, I, I don't think so because I paid. That was actually, that was the highest bill, a service bill that I've had on the truck since I've owned it. I, boy, I hope I don't have to do anything like that anytime soon. Now, you know, some of you uh, shared comments that you've had rear end issues that were, you know, they were a little more catastrophic than what I had. So I'm glad that I caught it soon. Yes, I had to pay up for it, but it could have stopped something way worse from happening down the road, which would have been a lot more costly. This is what's called a, as he described it, a floating axle truck. Uh, he didn't have to take the wheels off. So he said, and from what I understand, you remove this cap here and the axle comes right out. So the wheels remained bolted to the hubs but the axle can come out from here so you can see where he's worked on that so floating axle rear end not something i'm familiar with but i can understand what he's talking about so the truck is fixed uh drove it back here from the shop parked it then tore it all apart i'm pretty sure i talked about this that i wanted to um get the engine cleaned up because uh it had a lot of built up oil and dirt stuck to the engine. The engine has always been a dry engine, oil pan, everything dry. But it's not now after running that T6. And that's the only change that I made as far as uh, between last year and this year is I ran the T6 oil and man, do I have um, seepage down. Now I've, I'm hoping that something didn't let go. I'm gonna be up under the truck I'm gonna clean the entire oil pan up. The oil pan was always dry, no signs of seepage or leakage. It's not now. So I gotta get everything all cleaned off down there. But in addition, I wanted to clean off the top of the engine, put in some new parts. So that's what I've been working on. You know, I've talked about how when I first got this uh, truck, I was a little bit intimidated by the engine. You know, I had no experience with a diesel engine. And I was, a li I was intimidated and I was a little bit apprehensive about really working on it. But as time has gone on, I've gotten way more comfortable. I think the, the watershed moment was when I tore the, the air box and stuff out to replace the ICP sensor, the injection control pressure sensor. Uh, and I just said, I'm going to do this. And it was, it required me to the, take the air box and the, the turbo inlet hose out so that I had access to get down to that sensor. And when I got up in there and started working, I realized that there's really not a lot going on in there on top of this engine. Um, you know, this doesn't have an intercooler like the pickup truck 7.3 does. So the air intake goes from the air box right back to the turbo and then out of the turbo to the hoses that connect up to the cylinder heads. It's, there's really not a lot going on. So when I thought about what I wanted to do this summer uh, and get that all taken apart so that I can check everything out and make sure that I got good seals and gaskets and everything, I just dove into it and I had this thing apart within a couple few hours.
So after the truck came back from the shop, I basically, I, you know, I had a whole list of maintenance items that I wanted to do. But the fun stuff is what I've been doing inside of it. I've got, you know, some beautification things that I've been working on and that I still have planned. I, I'm really, cause I haven't done a lot of like prettying up kind of stuff. That's not really my thing, but I'm gonna do that this year. I've got some good ideas on how to make, I think look a little bit better in there, a little more comfortable. So it looks good in pictures, right? If you're on our Instagram, you would have seen a picture of the engine in its current state. And then inside the truck, um, you know, obviously the bed is ready for the mattress to be brought back out here. I've got the lefty's new leash hooks hanging here. You know, we did this a couple weeks ago, stuck this new um, vinyl flooring up here. And I've got a big project happening right over in this area along this wall. So this is coming up. We've got some shelves that are getting ready to be installed. A lot of really neat things. That my broom is no longer going to fall over when we're driving over rough roads. It's the little things in life like this that I'm like, why the heck didn't I do that a long time ago? So that's a snap-in, you know, broom handle holder. The broom used to fall over commonly when we were going over rough roads. So I've got a lot of things going on out here. I'm, I'm having a ball, a uh, couple of reasons. You know, I love doing this stuff, but I've let myself not feel like I'm under pressure for a schedule. I've always really pushed myself to, to do things and do things and do things and do things. And this year, you know, we've we've had uh, all the medical appointments. Um, Lefty has another vet appointment coming up in about three weeks to get the second uh, part of his Lyme disease vaccine. Uh, I just had him tested for all those things, heartworm, Lyme disease, he's negative. I wanna keep it that way. So he got, uh, for the first time, he's had a Lyme vaccine and it's a two-parter. So he had the first part already, and now the second part we've got coming up. So, you know, I've got time. I'm not pushing myself to, to do all these things on the truck. I'm doing them like when I feel like doing them, and that's what makes me feel a lot better. I'm not doing it like a job. I'm doing it like a hobby. And that's how I enjoy, I really enjoy working on the truck is when I can do it, when the mood hits me, you know, when I really feel like doing something. I think I do a better job when I'm in that, that frame of mind as opposed to just pushing myself. Um, and the last thing I want is for projects on the truck to, to make me not feel good. I always wanna feel good about doing stuff. Yes, this is my life and my home, but I wanna do the things right and I wanna do them so that they're enjoyable for me. And Lefty, he loves hanging out here while I'm working on the rig. I think. Hey, pup. You hanging out? Hi. So thanks everybody for being with us on the channel and sticking with us while we hang out here in New York. Still waiting for the diesel prices to come down. I don't know whether it must be the area that we're in right here. The prices just seem to have stalled in the high $5 near $6 range, just don't seem to be coming down anymore. Uh, I've got to do some looking because um, we're down below a quarter tank in the rig. Uh, so I do need to, to put some fuel in. Uh, I've got the truck inspected when it was up at the shop. You a little warm in here, buddy? So I'm gonna jump inside right now and get this video set up and uploaded for all of you. I just wanted to give an update and let you know what we're working on, that, that the truck is back, the repair was successful, albeit pricey. We spent the day yesterday um, over at Dalen's house. I was helping her clean out her garage. She just moved into that place and uh, the garage was just basically a dumping ground as they moved in. And so we spent several hours getting that cleared out um, the day before that, we spent the afternoon out here cleaning her car. Um, you know, Blue is a, a husky and a lot of hair, 
and uh, the car was looking a little fuzzy so we spent quite a bit of time cleaning the inside and um, you know showed her how to keep all the door jams cleaned up and the door bottoms and the door panels and we we uh, cleaned her carpet the seats we've still got some more to do but it looked a thousand times better than it was and she was feeling overwhelmed I think so I'm, I'm more than happy to show her how to clean that stuff and help her do it and you know trying to instill in her you know how to take care of your stuff and keep it in good condition you know it's expensive things that deserve to be treated well and I'm hoping that that's gonna stick with her you know when I was young it took me a while as a young man to start to respect items especially expensive items you know treat them like they're gonna last your entire life that's how I treat stuff um, so I, I hope I've had a great time the last two days helping her with all that stuff and going over this afternoon tomorrow is her garbage day we have quite a donation to put out at her curb so I'm going over this afternoon and gonna help her get all that stuff out to the to the curb uh, so so it can disappear tomorrow yeah yeah lefty had a ball lefty in blue over at Dalen's house it's like a kindergarten class just letting them loose these two man they go bonkers Morning. Good morning. Here. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, sweetie. Oh, down. Oh, oh, oh. Hi. Hi, down. Stay down. Stay down. Come here, boy. Hi, sweetie. You're such a pretty girl. You're so pretty. Oh, oh she got carpet now. Yeah, I bet she she loves it. Cause she has no grip on this hardwood, so she comes over here. Oh, she's a pretty girl. Yes, you are. Grandma said she doesn't like their coffee. Well, this, I got a coffee. actually ran into the kitchen drawer and knocked his muzzle see that mark right there you know such a knucklehead like and just keeps right on going <laughs> you know and I heard it it's like BAM yep what a goofball everybody take care be safe we'll see y'all again really soon all right buddy uh, you want to sit somewhere else where it's not so warm <laughs>